faithful to me. Yes. He brought me through a lot of tr troubles and trials and things that I couldn't have made it without him. That's right. You know, I don't see how anyone like Judas could, after walking with Jesus for three years, could go and sell him for such a small price. He got little money out of that. But he got eternal debt. I, want to, I might not comment much, but I, I may too. But I want to turn to St. Matthew 26 and start with the 14th verse. Now I'm, going to, I'm going to try to uh, go through the 56, but I don't know. Seems like a lot of scripture, but I can it moves pretty fast. It says, Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. Now that word coveted means he made a covenant with them. He didn't just get paid and go back. He made a covenant with them and it damned his soul. The Bible says Judas was a devil from the beginning. Why would Jesus put a devil in one of his twelve? To betray him. God knows exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. He knows how to bring it about. And when he says it, it's going to be done that way. And from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him. Can you imagine that? I've watched TV shows before where somebody just gradually, gradually planned to destroy somebody else. It's the same devil. It's the same thing that God said to watch out for. You've got to love your neighbor as you do yourself. That don't mean you just love the Christian. You love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Treat every man like you want him to treat you. Yes. And if you treat every man like you want him to treat you, then you're treating every man like God wants to treat him. Jesus died on the cross so every person could be saved. Yes, he did. And still yet, there are people absolutely that will say, I don't want none of it. I want just what I want. They are out for themselves. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into a, the city to a, such a man and say unto him, the master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. One of you shall betray me. And he knew which one. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? How would you feel if the Lord was among you and he said, You're, one of you is going to betray me? Would you start searching your heart? <coughs> Would you start wondering now, uh, how, is, how did I, how could I betray him? How did I want to become a, a, a traitor? And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. He had already made a covenant with the chief priest and the elders the rulers, to betray Jesus. 
And now he had the, the, the brass to come up and take the communion with Jesus Christ. You know, if you, now if you take the communion and you're not worthy to do so, you know you can die. That don't mean because you feel like you're not worthy. Are you willing to serve God all with all your heart, to follow Jesus Christ, follow the Holy Ghost, follow all that He wants you to do? There is no way that you can betray Him. There is no way that you can take communion without it being right. I know, I know people, and there's some that we care about a lot. They think if you take communion over once a month, you're doing it for show. You can take it every day because it is to remind you and show you what you are alive for. Yes. It's the body and the blood of Jesus. Yes. If you are respecting that, there is no way that you can be lost. No way. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been better or been good for him that he had never been born. At least he had just been not, he, he didn't exist. But now he's got eternal life in hell or eternal death. Did you know that there's people that don't think that hell's going to be bad. But there's no end to it. There is no end to it. Why? Because anyone that would betray a man that came from God and said, I am here to redeem you and set you free so you can have eternal life with me and my Father. And they would rather have the world. That's what April Fool's Day is for. You know, that when, uh, when he was talking about that, when Lonnie was talking about that, that's amazing that the Passover came on April Fool's Day. It may be in the Bible somewhere, I don't know. But I don't remember it ever happening or anybody ever saying that it, they came on the same day. But you know, God knows exactly what to do, yes, when to do it, yes, and all of that. Yes. Then Judas, which he betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Mm -hmm. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. That bread wasn't his body. It represented his body that was going to be broken. Yes, he did. When I take communion or when uh, anybody takes communion, I don't say, Look at me. I'm taking this. God wants us to love him. The only reason that Jesus came was to save us and to take us to see his Father. Amen. He always was referring to his Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yes. We should be. If you've seen me, you've seen Jesus and the Father. Right. When you look at me, you should be able to see Jesus and his Father. Yes. Just like you look at Jesus, they saw his Father. You should, they should have. I like this. I'm telling you, I like this. Yes. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it unto them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. We're going to see on over in here how agonizing Jesus, what agony Jesus went through. But he had his mind 
made up to do the Father's will. Yes, that's right. Remember the other night? Mind, will, and emotions. Yes. You gotta have your mindset. You gotta have your will working right. Which will manifest in your emotions, your actions, yes, sir. your body. Bring it into subjection, everything to the obedience of Christ. Amen. The Spirit of God, when you got born again, everything in your spirit, man, was of God. Yes. All things are of God. But your mind, your will, your emotions have to be controlled. And that's through the Word of God, led by the Spirit of God, teaching you what you should do to please God. <laughs> but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Yes, the kingdom of God is with men. Jesus was talking about when He went back to the Father and sent the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost taught all of us what we're supposed to do to be like God. And when they had summoned Him, they went out into Mount, the Mount of Olives. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Now, I can say a lot about that right there. And after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. See, he knew he was going to get up. But when he said that, they didn't realize he was going to rise in three days. They were still blinded. Why? Because they just couldn't see because the Holy Ghost hadn't yet come. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be, be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. He was talking out of his own mind. Yes, he was. Out of his own emotions. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice, three times, Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, <laughs> yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Yes. Now Jesus had poured into these twelve men his word for three years. He walked with them for three years. Judas was in there. He cast out devils. He raised the dead if he prayed for them. Why? Because Jesus, he, that was what his office called for. That's what his ministry was. But he lost that ministry because he covenanted with the chief priests and the elders to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. I've heard how much that is, but I don't remember. It's not very much. But be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. And Judas was un unequally yoked with unbelievers. The unbelievers wanted to kill Jesus. So Satan used Judas to try to get it done. But they didn't have sense enough. They're so stupid that they didn't realize that he had to be crucified before they would be destroyed. Right. If they'd have let him alone and not killed him, they would have still probably been going. And God knew that. So he said, no, this is what is going to happen. And the cross is the center of the universe. It is. And there's no end to the rest of it. That's right. What verse am I in? 36. I'm that four down. Yes, sir. Then cometh Jesus with them 
unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Set ye here while I go yonder and pray. And I want you to notice this. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. They weren't feeling that. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further. He couldn't even stand to be around them. He was so miserable. And fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. See, that was their problem. They were still in the flesh even though they were one of the twelve apostles. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. He was miserable. Have you ever been that miserable? He was miserable. He knew where his destiny was and it wasn't in heaven. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Judas had already accomplished what he yes, said. He the coming. Rise, let us be gone and behold, behold, Rise, let us be gone, going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. And he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whosoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. Betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Mm -hmm. Well, 30 pieces of silver. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and <coughs> struck the servant of the high priest's ear and smote it off his ear. Smote off his ear. Smote his ear off. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into thy his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou not, now listen to that, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me twelve, more than twelve legion of angels. What if he prayed for you to his father? He has sent twelve legion of angels and delivered him out of all that. You and I wouldn't be here today. That's right. You and I would have been in hell. But how then? Shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it is, must be? In that same hour, said Jesus to the multitude, Are ye come out against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hand on me. But all this was done, that the scripture of the prophets might be fulfilled. 
Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. God has a way of doing things. Amen. And he's going to do it his way. Yes, he is. And when Jesus came and died on the cross and rose again, that fulfilled those scriptures and there's no way they cannot be done right. Today we are here because of Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection. Yes, hallelujah. As we talked about Jonah here the other night, what was Jonah's reward? What did he want when he went and prophesied to the the, the people, Nineveh? He wanted to, uh, to feel like he was still okay. He wanted to feel like he was uh, something good because God let, uh, did what he prophesied. But I got to thinking about that. What did he give up? Can you make, can you tell me what he gave up? I never thought of it before. In that city, there was 120,000 children that didn't know right from wrong. Just the children. If Nina had a preached the word, he should have rejoiced because he knew how merciful God was and God would save all those children and all the people of Nineveh probably because, and that would have been Jonah's reward instead of just being I prophesied it happened. That's right. There was no love in that what Jonah wanted. He said, I'll preach it mightily. I'll preach the message mightily and God will destroy every bit of them. And God said there's, there's 120,000 that don't know their right hand from their left besides the cattle. That's not guilty of sin. But when Jonah was in the, they knew he was in the whale, in the fish's belly, they saw him swallow him. And here he was walking in them. <laughs> And when the king heard about it, buddy, he said, we're going to fast and see God save them. And Jonah wasn't happy, but he should have been because all of those souls were saved from death. Now, I don't know how many of them grew up and went bad, but I know one of them did. Because four years later, God destroyed Nineveh because they sinned. But I don't imagine Jonah got to live to see that. But all I can say, all I can say, as that when we take this communion this morning, we're fellowshipping. With Jesus. Yes. The life that's in Jesus. The fellowship that is in Jesus. That we have with him. It's just. There is no man that can express it. There is no man that can talk it. And tell it and explain it. Okay Lonnie. Explain it like it needs to be said. They said, when are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, it's not in your power to know. But he said, after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, then you can do something. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God. Yes, 